Good day and welcome to Building on the Rock. I am Pastor Chris Turner, the pastor of Rock Tabernacle Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And today we are going to get back into the Word of God. We've been in the midst of a teaching that uh, we've entitled Decisions That Decide Destiny. Decisions That Decide Destiny. And I'm certain that this teaching will be a tremendous blessing to you as you listen in Jesus' name. Amen. The great Dr. Miles Monroe said, decisions decide destiny. You know, God does not decide any person's destiny. He could, but he doesn't. The devil cannot decide your destiny. He can't. God won't, and the devil can't. Now, God has a plan for your life. It's a good plan. He's a good God. He has a good plan for your life, and, and uh, he desires to to manifest that. He desires to, for you to walk in that and live that out for your life. The devil is a bad devil, and he has a bad plan for your life. Uh, he has a bad destination that he wants you to arrive at. But the destination, the destiny that you arrive at is that of your choosing. It won't be God's choices, and it won't be the devil's choices that, that decide for you. It'll be yours, amen? Your decisions decide your destiny. And we've been talking about that. And um, number one decision We'll always go back to this. The number one most important decision that anyone ever will ever make is to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Amen? To receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God has he sent Jesus to the earth. Jesus lived, but then he died on the cross. He was buried, he rose again on the third day. And the Bible says that salvation has been made available to all men. Salvation has come upon all men once Jesus was raised from the dead. However, a decision still has to be made on your part. God will not make that decision for you. You need to, re to choose and decide to receive Jesus as your personal Savior. And then what he accomplished at the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection will be uh, uh, accounted to you or credited to you, and you'll be born again, amen? So that's the number one decision that we need to make is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Because, and the reason why that's the most important decision that anyone will ever make, because that decision decides where you will spend eternity, amen? And so you, if you haven't made that decision to receive Jesus, it's, it's, it's very simple, All you, it's just requires to you to pray a simple prayer and we can do that with you at the end of this broadcast and, and you can become born again. But there are other decisions that people make that are deciding the destiny, that decide where you would wind up, the kind of life that you will live, um, uh, the, the, the quality of life that you will live, and the kind of life that you live, whether you receive and walk in the good things that God has for you or whether you don't. Other decisions are, are uh, are, are deciding that other things that you are choosing and deciding are deciding that amen and we talked about uh, your associations the associations that you choose and we're gonna go back into that but we'll refer back to it later on because we're we're, we're gonna refer back to it but your associations are deciding your destiny amen you will negatively or positively be affected by the people that you choose to surround yourself with amen the people that you choose to spend the most time with that has very much to do with where you end up in life, whether a good place or a bad place, amen? But we've been on the topic of the, the, the thoughts that you choose, your thoughts. The thoughts that you choose are deciding or determining your destiny, amen? Proverbs chapter 4 and 23, this is all review. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, be careful how you think for your life is shaped by your thoughts. That's what Solomon said. Solomon also said in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man or a woman thinks in their heart, so you are, or so you will be. Your life is going and moving in the direction of your most dominant thoughts, the thoughts that dominate your mind. That's where your life is going, amen? That's the way God designed you. That's why God is after your mind. And not just God, but the devil is after your mind. God and the devil both know that, that to get you into the place where they want you to be, where they want you to arrive at, they have to have control of your mind. That's your soulish man. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. 
That's your thinker, your chooser, the chooser, and your feeler. That, that's where your that's, that's where your all your thoughts, your mind, your soulish man. I mean, not speaking about your spirit, man. Your spirit is the real you, amen, but you pos you are a spirit. You don't have a spirit, you are a spirit. You possess a soul, you possess a mind, will, and emotions, and right now, if you're in this earth, you live in a physical body. But it's your, it's your, it's your soulish man that's the most important part of you because that's the determinant, that's the one who chooses which way to go. That's the one who chooses who you will follow, the decisions that you make that will bring you to the place where, the, the good place that God wants you, or the bad place that the devil wants you. Amen? Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, we, we talked about that. Romans 12 verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, Paul, this is Paul writing to the church at Rome, and he's writing to a bunch of born-again Christians. They're already saved. But he says, now I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2 says, be not conformed to the world but be transformed and changed by the renewing of your mind, then you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? Paul said to a bunch of Christians, they were already saved and spirit-filled, but he said, now do something about your mind. Do something with your mind. Let your mind be renewed to the Word of God. Then and then only will you ever prove out the good and acceptable and perfect will of destiny, plan, purpose that God has for your life, amen? It happens when something happens in your thinking, amen? Glory to God, amen? So we, we talked last week also about uh, uh, the devil, your enemy, and how he operates. See, this, see, Satan wants to derail your destiny. He wants to stop your God-given destiny. He doesn't want you to arrive at the good place that God has in your life and to, and to receive and enjoy it all the good that God has for you. He doesn't want you to fulfill the purpose that God uh, has for you in this earth. He has a purpose for you. And the devil doesn't want you to fulfill it. And he knows, once again, that the key to stopping, to derailing your destiny is, is to control uh, the way a man thinks, to, co to control the person's thoughts. Amen? And so we talked about how he operates and because the, the Bible speaks uh, uh, very clearly, teaches us, how the devil seeks and desires to operate in our lives to stop our destiny. And he doesn't have a big bag of tricks. He's not very creative. He doesn't have a lot of things that he can choose. He doesn't have a big bag of tricks, and he doesn't have any new tricks. The devil has zero new tricks. No new tricks, and doesn't have a lot. He just has just a few things that he can do in your life to mess it up and to get you off track and to get you to miss your destiny. And if you can find out how he operates from the Word of God and recognize how he operates, you can defeat it every time. You can defeat it and you can win, amen? We can apply the Word of God and apply the weapons that God has given us and apply the Word of God to our lives and walk in it, and we can win every time over anything the devil tries to pull in your life, amen? He doesn't operate... Uh, uh, in, in, a, uh, in an uh, uncommon way. The Bible says that 1 Corinthians chapter 10 says that he is bound to operate to, to that which is common to man. There is no temptation taking you, Paul said. Paul put it this way. There is no temptation taking you, he said, but such as is common to man. It's common. In other words, the devil is very predictable. Very predictable. And so we talked about the, the, the five words that were important from the Bible. That you understand these five words, you understand how the devil operates. And we gave some definitions of these five words from the Word of God that are, that are so important to us. And I'll just go over them real quick. I won't go too deep into them. This is all review from last week before we get into the new material. But we talked about the name or the word devil. Actually, the word devil is not really the devil's name. It's actually more of a title or a more of a way of operate a way he operates he operates the devil that word devil comes from the greek word diabolos we said comes from two words put together and to make one the word dia and the word balo dia balo the word balo means to throw it means to repeatedly throw something 
The word dia means to penetrate or to go through. This is where the word where the devil, the word devil comes from. Diabolo, diabolos. The devil wants to repeatedly throw something at you, repeatedly throw something at you until it eventually breaks through or it eventually penetrates. And what we said he throws repeatedly are thoughts. Thoughts. He throws that, that's where his battleground is. The battleground that Satan, we, we were all, we're involved in spiritual warfare. Paul talks about spiritual warfare. And the spiritual warfare that we're involved with is from the spirit realm. That's because Satan is a spirit. But it's not fought in the spirit realm. It's fought in the battleground of the mind. Satan operates from the spirit world, but he wants to, the battleground, the place where he operates is in your thinking, in your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, your mind, and your will. That's where he fights. And he wants to throw thoughts at you and continually, repeatedly throw thoughts and throw thoughts and throw thoughts like you throw a rock at a window. And it, and it bounces off and throw it again and it bounces off. And you keep on throwing rocks and rocks and eventually you break it. You go through. You go through. Satan says, if I keep throwing thoughts at you, I, I, I can break through into your thinking. That's where the word devil comes from. Diabolos. We talked about the word Satan, Shatana, uh, and, and that's his name. That's his Hebrew, that's his, the Hebrew language. But that's Satan's name. Satan, and it means to accuse, the accuser. Uh, it means to, carries with the idea of slander, carries also the idea of false accusation and lies. So that's what the devil throws at your, at your mind. The devil, the diabolos, he wants to repeatedly throw something, throw something at you, and what he's throwing at your mind are accusations, lies, slanders, that hopefully will break through into your thinking and, and, and become strong in your thinking. We talked about the third word, the word wiles, last week. We talked about wiles. And that was from Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 11 says, Paul said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles? We said last week that the word wiles comes from the uh, Greek word methodos, which means to operate on a road means to operate on a single road or to go down a road. That's, once again, speaking about the enemy, the devil, he wants to operate on a road. There's a single, well, you know, roads go somewhere. There's a road that the devil wants to operate on. There's only one road. And the road he wants to operate on is the road to your mind. He wants to pave a road or to build a road into your thinking where he can run his thoughts, run his lies, run his uh, slanders, false accusations, and whatever else mentally into your mind, amen? That's what the word wiles means, amen? We talked about the word devices, devices last week. That was from 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, where the apostle says, that apostle Paul says that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. That word devices. What do you mean word devices? That comes from a Greek word, noemata, which actually the best translation means mind games. We're not ignorant of Satan's mind games. That's what Paul said. We're not ignorant. He said, don't be ignorant of Satan's noemata, of the mind games he wants to play on you. And once again, this is how the devil operates. This is how the devil has operated for over 6,000 years of human history. This is how the devil has operated and, and, and tempted every single man, woman, boy, and girl that's ever lived, that he's, that he's ever operated through or attempted to derail their destiny. He, he operates the same way. It's, not, it's, not, uh, it, it's predictable. He, he tries to go through the avenue of the mind to build thoughts and lies, to throw thoughts and lies, to play mind games and to, and to make you believe a lie so strong until it eventually becomes the last word that we talked about last week is the word stronghold. The word stronghold is the Greek word eukaros. 
And it's uh, as found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, where the Apostle Paul said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. Strongholds are not something that's out there in the in the atmosphere, out there floating around in the air somewhere, or some you know, in, in your house somewhere. Strongholds are demonically inspired ways of thinking. Strongholds are right there between a person's ears. Strongholds are, uh, we said that word stronghold come, comes from, a, actually it has two meanings. One is the word prison. It speaks about a prison with walls that, where, that, will, that will confine a person. A, per, a person is locked in and confined behind prison walls and bars. That's what the word stronghold means. But it also means uh, a fortress. It's a, it speaks of a castle or a fortress with walls that keep people out. Amen. Uh, uh, emperors and kings lived in fortresses. They had fortresses that were walled so that people would stay out. And but also there are prisons that lock people in. And that's that's where that word stronghold comes from. That where Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. And uh and, and that's what Satan's desire is, is to get you, and, and it works so much and so strongly in your mind until a stronghold is built, a demonically inspired way of thinking that imprisons you. You are imprisoned in your thoughts. You're, 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 you're trapped. You can't get out of this way of thinking, and you're imprisoned there. And that same, those same bars and those same walls become a fortress that will keep the blessings of God out. They will keep, a stronghold will keep the good things of God out. It will keep the blessings, the promises of God out of your life from coming in and manifesting in your life. But it also, it will keep you in prison and confined. That's what Satan's desire is, is, is to, to build strongholds that, that can do that. And there are many, many people in the earth, and sadly, many, many Christians who are confined in, into, into wrong ways of thinking. And Satan has built, he has successfully played mind games on them. He has successfully thrown lies at them, fed them lies, and fed uh, 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 um, uh, 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 accusations against them. You know, until and that they've believed, they've let they've let Satan go down that road into their thinking, and they've let a stronghold be built. That that's right now they're they're stuck in it. Believers, God's children, amen. And then there's many many areas that that it can happen, and we talked about a few areas last week where people have strongholds, like strongholds of of fear, strongholds that cause depression, suicide. Suicide, was, which, which can even lead to depression, and, uh, or the depression which can lead to suicide, even among believers, even among God's children. That's so sad, amen? Uh, failure, sin, sickness, doubt, and unbelief. People have strongholds of doubt and unbelief where you can show them what the promise of God says. You can show them what God said and what God promised, but they have such a stronghold built up of unbelief that they cannot just lay hold of it and believe it for themselves, that God will do that for me. God will help me or God will deliver me. Also, uh, bad habits. People have uh, bad habits that they can't shake, they can't get rid of, and, and they can never shake them and get rid of them as long as that stronghold is there in place, that stronghold in their thinking. Remember what we said last week and from 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11, where Peter said, abstain from fleshly, uh, lust, which war against the soul. He said it last week. This is, this is still review. He said, abstain from fleshly lust. We don't want to get under the flesh and get off into sin and get off into habits and, and wrong habits and fleshly sinful lusts. But he said they war against what? They war against your flesh? No. They war against your spirit? No, the devil is not, not warring against your spirit. Jesus lives there. He ain't trying to touch Jesus. But they, they war against the mind, the will, the emotions, the thinker, the chooser, the feeler. That, that part of you 
that, that, that's in the mental realm, in the emotional, mental realm, that's where Satan will war. He will war you. He will fight you there because he knows that if I can get you bound up there, and if I can lock you up there, I'll, I'll, I'll put you, I'll lock you into a prison and you won't walk into the destiny that God has for you. You won't experience the good and acceptable and perfect will that God has for you. You won't experience all the good things that God has for you, amen? We talked about those, uh, so talked about that, amen? Talked about different things. Poverty is a stronghold many times in people's minds. They just, they just believe and they think poor. Their thoughts are poor. Their plans, their dreams are all, it, poverty is all they think, amen? Well, guess what? That man will never prosper. He will never prosper. I don't get, and there's so many promises in the Bible that promise prosperity. That promises that God will meet your needs, that God will bless you. But as long as you have a stronghold of poverty in your mind, guess what? You'll be locked, you'll be, you'll be locked over into poverty and the blessings of God will be locked out. We have to pull that stronghold down. This is the good news we discussed last week, that any stronghold that Satan has built up in your mind can be pulled down. There is no stronghold that the, that, that the devil has that lies and he's told you so tough, so strongly, that have built an addiction in your life, built a, a situation in your life that's so strong, so tough, that the word of God can't set you free. James calls the word of God the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty means that it'll set you free every time. Jesus said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus, I can set you free from it. I can set you free from it. You'll go free from it, and you'll go into the good thing that God has for you, and you'll receive all, uh, 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 God's good plan for your life. Amen? But those strongholds have to come down first. Amen? And we talked about last week also this, the importance of the Word of God. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen? He said, continue ye in my word. Then shall ye be my disciples indeed. This is, Rome, this is John chapter 8, verse 32. Continue ye in my word. Then shall ye be my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. You can, it's free. You don't, you don't overcome strongholds by, by, by crying about it, by feeling bad about it, by by. Begging God, oh God, I get this stronghold on my mind. Oh, and that's, and, and we, that's not how you overcome strongholds. You overcome strongholds by taking the word of God, the truth. Jesus said you should know the truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. The word of God will set you free. And we said last week that the word of God itself can become a stronghold. See, all strongholds aren't bad. I know the devil has strongholds that he wants to... Uh, Build in your mind, but God said, if you let the Word of God uh, get in your way of thinking, uh, get in your heart, in your mind, strong enough, it can become a stronghold that can lock the devil out, and that can lock you into the blessings and the good things that God has for you. Amen. God can build that so strong in your thinking that the devil, circumstances, situations, tests, and trials cannot overcome that. Amen. That, that's how strong the Word of God can get in you. Amen? But it doesn't happen automatically. And it doesn't happen overnight. Not some, I can't just snap my fingers and make that happen for you. I can't just blow on you, my Holy Ghost anointed breath on you, or, or anoint you with oil to make it happen. And don't get me wrong. I can help you along those lines. I can, I can help you and be an aid to you. But, but the victory comes when you get into the Word of God. And you take the word of God and you begin to think God's thoughts about you. God has some wonderful thoughts about you. You begin to take his word and, and, and push out those old thoughts and those tear down those old strongholds and let God build in you the thoughts that he wants to have in you that will propel you into the good destiny that God has for you. He's got good things for you. Good plans for you, good, good, good things, great things, amen? You're not just here just for no reason in the earth, amen? God's got great things for you, but it, it's going to come through the word of God, amen? Now, I promised you this week, I, I want to give you some steps, and I won't get through all these steps today. I don't want to call them steps, I call them points. 
This is some points, amen? These are points that we're gonna give you to, to win, that you need to know, to win the battle over strongholds in your mind. You need to know these things, to win the battle over any stronghold that Satan wants to build in your mind or may have built. You might be in prison right now in some thoughts that you that, that's not right or that's, that's kept you in a lifestyle or kept you in habits or kept you away from some, from some blessings that God has for you. You might be uh, uh, right now at, uh, dealing with strongholds in your mind that you know is not God, but you can be free from them. But you need to know these, these, these points that I'm going to give you. And we'll just go one, two, three, four, five. I think there's seven of them. And it, it's going to help you. Amen? But point number one I want to talk about today is just that, number one, you cannot control the thoughts that come to your mind. But you can decide the ones that stay in your mind. Did you hear that? You cannot control the thoughts that come to your mind, but you have a say and you can control the thoughts that stay in your mind. Amen? See, because, you know, and this is very important. People think that just because something comes to my mind, just because I think something, I think a wrong thought or think bad, a bad thought or repeatedly think bad thoughts, and somehow that's me and that's, that's, that's just, you know, and, and some folks think that that's sin in and of itself. No, 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 no. See, th there's the, the, the devil, Satan. He's out here in the world, and there's nothing you can do about that. Not right now. He has a right to be here. He has a right to operate here. Adam gave him that right uh, but when he fell. And so for the time being, until Jesus comes back and removes him from from this earth, he's gonna operate in here and he has, a, he has a right to operate and he has access to your mind. He has access to your mind. And so, and so you can't help it. every thought that comes to your mind, you know, you, you can't stop it from coming to your mind. Now you can stop them from staying in your mind. You know why? Because it's your mind and you have a choice. You have a choice. You know, Kenneth E. Hagin used to say it this way, uh, Kenneth E. Hagen, uh, uh, great teacher, great man of God, great teacher of faith. He, he's, he used to say this. He used to say that you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. Did you hear that? I was like, you missed that. You can't stop birds from flying over your head. They're going to fly over. They, they can fly over. They, they have that right, that freedom to do that. But if a bird tries to build its nest in your hair, you need to do something about it. You need to get that thing out and put a stop to that. You can do that. Amen? And the devil is like that bird. You can't stop the devil from flying over your head. You can't stop Satan from, from coming into your, from trying to uh, suggest thoughts and suggestions into your, putting, putting them in your mind. But if they stay in your mind, if they build a nest in your mind, that's because you permitted it. Amen. You allow that to happen. You can put a stop to that. Amen. And that's what we're doing. We're teaching you how to put a stop to that. Amen. So these thoughts of, as I said, like depression and discouragement and, uh, or some temptation into some sense. These thoughts will come to your mind. I used to think when I first got saved, especially, I, I guess a couple minutes ago, that if a thought, if a tempting thought came to my mind that I have sinned, or the thought came that I should knock this person out and do something, you know, do something stupid, or cuss them out or whatever, oh, and I get so many, but that, that's, 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 oh, I, I just sinned. No, no, that's not sin. That's Satan trying to, play mind games on you, trying to get on that road into your mind, trying to put thoughts into your mind that would eventually become strongholds, and he just introduced that thought to your mind. He, he suggested that to your mind. He suggested that you go out and, and do this sexual thing that you used to do before you got saved, do that thing, or, 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 or go, go get high, or whatever you used to do that, that, that you don't do anymore. You know, but once again, just because those thoughts come to you, or just because those, those thoughts Satan will introduce that thought or bring that thought to your mind, that in and of itself is not sin. 
it's not sin until you take that thought, until you until you accept it and receive it and and, and yeah and, 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 and agree to it, and then down you stepped over, amen. But just because thought came to your mind doesn't mean that doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. And don't let Satan make you feel bad. Because and you know, I, and, and anybody who's honest, who's saved and loves God, is honest that sometimes a whole lot can come to my mind that I wish that I wanted to do, you know, bad things to people, or people make you mad, or people get you upset, or, or things that, you know, that you used to do. A whole lot of things come to your mind, but you don't, you don't act on them, amen? But this is number, point number one, is that you can't... You can't not control the thoughts that come to your mind, but you can decide the ones that stay. If that thought just stays in your mind and grows there and stays there and takes root there, well, that's because you, you've permitted it and you've allowed it, amen? And you can put a stop to that. How? Let's hold on. We're getting to that. We're going to get to that point, amen? But, but you can put a stop to that, and you need to put a stop to that. Don't just let the devil... Uh, have a play, use your mind as a playground. Amen? He wants to just have you so full of fearful thoughts, full of worry, full of all kinds of anxiety, full of all kinds of uh, things that are in your mind that, 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 that's, that's, uh, that's negative, that's bad, negative things. Satan will do that, and he wants to do that, and he will accomplish that if you allow him. But once again, you don't have to allow him. You can't control the thoughts that come to your mind. But if a thought comes and stays, it only stays with your consent or your permission. Don't give the devil permission to stay and to build that stronghold. Amen? Amen. And this is uh, point number two that we're talking about today. Point number two is, uh, is that it's kind of like it goes along with point number one. But point number two is thoughts may come and thoughts may persist. They may come to your mind, and they may, may come and they persist. That means they stay there for a while, but if they are unspoken and unacted upon, they will die unborn. Hear that? The thoughts that come, the bad thoughts that Satan wants to come to your mind, they may come to your mind, and they may come and they may persist. That means they may stay there for a while. They may stay there for long periods of time sometimes, but if you don't act upon them, and, and, and one way you act upon them is speaking them. Don't open your mouth and say certain things that are in your mind. Don't, don't open your mouth and say certain things that are in your mind. I mean, because, because but when you do that, you've taken, that's taken it to the next level right there. But, but if you don't act upon them and you don't speak them, eventually they're going to die unborn. They're just thoughts. It's just mind games. It's just lies. It's just temptations uh, that Satan's bringing to your mind. It's just what it is. It's just thoughts. Don't act on them. Don't give action to them. Don't speak them. And they'll eventually die unborn. Let me, let me show you something that Jesus said here. Jesus said this. And I, you know who taught me this was Kenneth Copeland taught me this a lot. I mean, he taught me this. He taught it in his broadcast. I watched it. I learned this years ago from Brother Copeland. And this is when Jesus was talking about uh, worry. This is in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, Jesus said here, this is all in red. I know Jesus is speaking. Jesus says, um, I, I'm, I'm not going to start from verse 31. Let's go up a little, because he's talking about, um, about worry. Starting in verse 25, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Therefore, Jesus said, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Notice it says, notice it says take no thought for your life. He said, don't take the thought. You might have a thought, but just because you have it doesn't mean you took it. Just because it came to your mind doesn't mean you took it. He said, don't take the thought. Amen? That's a key. He said, take no thought for your life, what you should eat or drink, nor for your body, what you should put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, the birds of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? 
Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic to his stature? And why take thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. They grow, they grow, but they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, verse 31 says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need all of these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Here he says here, that verse 31 says, Take no thought, saying. Take no thought by saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we think? This whole chapter, those whole verses, those several verses I just read there, is talking about worry. Talking about worry. Being anxious and worried. And you know, that can be a stronghold. We know that that's, that's a stronghold. And in fact, uh, Brother Kenneth E. Hagin said that worry is the biggest sin of the church. He said that, but I agree with it. There are people who worry, and it's sin. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be worried. If you're worried about anything right now, you're, you're in sin. You do, because the Bible says, don't do it. Jesus said, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Resist worry like you will resist any other sin. For example, there are people who, who will worry, but they don't go out and fornicate, but they worry. And they, they would condemn somebody for getting into fornication or adultery. Oh, that's sin. Yeah, but worry is sin too. The same Bible that says don't fornicate, don't commit adultery, also says don't worry. Amen? There are people who go out and, and, and who would never go out and get drunk because the Bible says be not drunk with wine. So Paul said, don't be drunk with wine. Now, I never, I don't drink. Okay, that's fine, but you worry. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that either. Because the same Bible says, be not drunk with wine, also says, take no thought for your life. Jesus, Jesus he's not suggesting this. This is not a suggestion that Jesus is giving. It's a commandment. He's saying, don't do it. It's wrong. Amen? Amen. Be anxious for nothing. Be careful. Oh, other places, he said, be careful for nothing. But by everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Amen? So if you're in worry, you're in sin. And let's just call it that. But let's just put a stop to it. But let's know how to put a stop to it. Know how, first of all, not to take it. Just because a thought comes to your mind doesn't mean it's your thought. Because worried thoughts and fearful thoughts will always come to your mind. You know why? Because the devil's out here in the world. He wants you to be full of worry and fear because he knows that if you're in worry and you're in fear, you're not going to be in faith. You're not going to see the you know, God move on your behalf. But worry opens the door to the devil to do his dirty deeds in your life, to do bad things in your life. When you begin like Job, he said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. Some bad things happened, but one of the way, things that he, he opened the door to the devil was the fact that he was full of worry. He worried about his kids. Well, you know what I'm saying? So don't, don't let the devil, don't give the devil access to your life through worry. But here, Jesus said in verse 31, says, Therefore take no thought, saying. So when worried thoughts come, they're not your thoughts. When fearful thoughts come, they're not your thoughts. If I don't act on them, if I don't speak them forth, they're not mine. Because Jesus said the way you take a thought is by saying it. And he said, don't take thought by saying. Don't open your mouth and say, oh, I'm just so scared for my son. I'm just so scared for my daughter. Because the streets are so bad in Milwaukee because people are getting shot and people are getting killed out there in the streets. And I'm just so scared that my son's going to get involved in the shootout. And he, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Those thoughts come to your mind. I know Satan will bring those thoughts to your mind because I have four sons, three sons actually, and a son-in-law, like my son. But but uh, but I, I, I have I have sons, and and those thoughts come to my mind. But I'm not going to open my mouth and begin to take them by saying those are Satan's thoughts. 
I'm going to cast them down. When they come to my mind, I'm going to cast them down and replace them with the word of God. I'm going to do, I'm going to resist. Satan, you're not going to build a stronghold. And in my thinking of fear and worry and anxiety and being terrified about my kids, uh, having a bad situation happening to them in the streets, you're not going to do that in my mind and torment me. Fear has torment, the Bible says. You're not going to torment me with those thoughts. So I'm, now, now, I couldn't help him when they came to my mind because Satan is in his world. He's a, he's a, he, has, he has a right to operate in this world, and he's going to operate in your mind because he has access to it. But if those thoughts come to my mind and stay, it's because I'm permitting them. I'm not going to permit those thoughts to stay in my mind. So one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to speak them. I'm not going to open my mouth and speak words of fear and worry and, 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 and take those thoughts. Because when I, that's what happens. When you speak them, you took them. They're yours now. Now before they weren't yours. They were the devil's thoughts that he was just introducing into your mind or trying to get in your mind. But once you open your mouth or once you acted upon it, once you acted upon the temptation or once you acted upon that, that, that thing that he was suggesting and putting in your mind or once you spoke it and acted upon it, then it became yours. Now it's yours. Amen? So don't let it become yours. Don't take it. Don't take it. It's not yours. Amen? I'm not taking that thought. Amen? If, if someone came to your door and knocked on your door and said, here, I have a, I have a delivery for you. What is that? Oh, uh, well, it's a box of rattlesnakes. I'm not taking that. Go get out of here. I'm not taking that. Would you take it? I'm not, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it. No, it's not mine. I didn't. I don't want to, they can come to my door. I'm not letting you in. Not, and you ain't leaving that here. No, take it. Get out. Get out of here with that. That's how you have to be with your thoughts. Amen. When Satan brings thoughts to your mind that are not of God, you have to be aggressive and be right on it and say no. Recognize it and say no. And I'm not taking it. I'm not going to open my mouth and add to it. Now we we talked about worry. Because that's an area that everybody, I guarantee you, you and me and everybody else, you have a, a temptation, you were tempted in that area. But there's other thoughts too, you know, thoughts of, you know, worrying about your life. But there's other thoughts too that, that are, that it's the same way. But just because it comes and just because it persists doesn't mean it's yours, doesn't mean it's yours. But if you don't speak it, you don't act upon it, it will die unborn. But once you spoke it, once you speak life to it, you're giving life to it when you're speaking it. Amen? You're giving life to it when you speak it. Don't give life to, to the wrong thoughts. Amen? And don't act on them. And don't give life to them by speaking them and, and acting on them. Glory to God. Amen? Uh, before we close, I'm going to talk about one more, one more point. We're talking about points that will help us not to let the devil derail our destiny. And we said number one is that we talked about... Um, Number one, we said that you can't control the thoughts that come to your mind, but you can control the ones that, but you have something to say about the ones that, that, that stay in your mind, amen? Don't let them stay. We said number two, law, words or thoughts may come and they may persist, but we don't give life to them by speaking them. We don't take them by speaking. But number three, I'm going to talk about this, is this, this is a point that's very important. I call, not this me, I, I heard, actually I heard Reverend Keith Moore uses. Uh, he called it the law of displacement. He isn't the first one, but he's the one I heard. Call it the law of displacement. Talk about the law of displacement for a minute. This is, this is simply what it means. When I talk about the law of displacement, see, you, you want to displace bad thoughts. If, if strongholds and negative thoughts are in your mind, you need to displace them. It means to get them out. But the law of displacement says this, the best way to push out wrong thoughts, the best way to push wrong thoughts out of your mind is by filling your thoughts with good thoughts. You know? The best way to push out Satan's lies and Satan's thoughts, Satan's fearful lies and thoughts and temptations, the best way to push them out is by filling your mind with God's thoughts. And when you fill your mind with God's thoughts, it will displace Satan's thoughts. It'll just push them out. It'll push them out. They won't occupy the same space because you're going to be thinking about something every day, on all day. You're going to be, your mind is not going to be blank. 
It's not going to just be void of thoughts. You're going to be thinking God's thoughts or the devil's thoughts all day, every day. Or thoughts in line with God's thoughts or thoughts in line with the devil's thoughts all day. Your mind won't be blank. So, but, so you're going to be thinking about something, but the best way to push out the bad thoughts is to, is to dis displace them with the good thoughts. And this is the illustration that comes to me. This is the illustration I, I heard. If you have a bucket full of dirt, and let's say you, you, you want to, that, that bucket's full to the top with dirt, and I have a hose, I can take that water hose and turn it on, and I can put it in that bucket. And what begins to happen is that water begins to go into that bucket that's full of dirt. And I just leave the, leave the, leave the hose on and let the water flow. And that water eventually will begin to mix with the dirt at first. It begins to mix with the dirt and it becomes what? It becomes mud. Uh, all I did was I put, the, I put the, the hose in that bucket. It was full of dirt, but I put the hose down in there and turned it on. And, and the, as the water goes in to that bucket, it mixes with that dirt and it becomes mud. Then, you, then you're going to have a bucket full of mud. Well, you don't want a bucket full of mud, do you? Just keep on letting the water run. Keep on letting that water run. And as the water continues to run into that bucket, eventually it'll displace more of that dirt. It'll move out more of that dirt and it'll become muddy water. Amen? But you don't want a bucket full of muddy water. So just keep the water running. Let the water run. And then as it runs and runs and runs, it keeps on running and running and running. And it keeps displacing that dirt and pushing more and more out. And eventually, if you let it run long enough, you're going to have a bucket full of clear water. You had a bucket full of dirt, but what happened to the dirt? The water displaced it. The water moved it out. I just put the water in, let the water run, and the water displaced it. It moved it out. It mixed for a while, but eventually it just kept moving and moving and moving and pushing it out, pushing it out, pushing it more and more and more until eventually, after some period of time, that water in that bucket will be clear water, no more dirt, no more mud, no more muddy water. It'll be just clear water. What happened is that you just displaced it. Amen? That's the same thing with dirty thoughts in your mind. If you have dirty thoughts in your mind or, or uh, thoughts by Satan that, that are uh, along the lines of temptation or worry or fear or, or habits or addictions or whatever it is, you have to address that. And, but the, but you, what you need to do, the best way to address it easily is to displace it. Take the Word of God. These are God's thoughts. And be, this is the water of the Word of God, the washing of the water by the Word of God, the Bible says. Take the water of the Word of God and just begin to turn it on. You turn it on by reading it, by on purpose thinking it, by opening your mouth and saying it, by meditating the Word, by spending time in the Word every day. When you do that, what you're doing is you displace things. You just, you're displacing Satan's thoughts. Okay? You, you, you're moving it out. You, it's not, you listen to teachings. Listen to, listen to people on, I mean, there are good men teaching the Word of God, the Word of Faith, and, and strong faith-building word on, on, on TV or on radio. When, as you do that, you're displacing, you're washing the water into your mind, into your thoughts, into your heart, and it will displace and it'll move out. Move out. Every it'll move out the bad things. And then every day in the morning you need to spend just some time. I'm not, I'm not gonna say how long you should spend. That's between you and the Lord. The Lord can show you. But spend some time. If it's nothing more but five or ten, fifteen minutes, sometime. Spend some time listening to the word, reading the word, speaking the word of God, reading it out loud or whatever, and, and let those thoughts, these, these are God's thoughts, the fresh water of God's thoughts will come in and begin to move out bad things, move out the bad, amen? And, and, and it'll eventually replace it. And especially when you get into a time of temptation, if you get into a time where the devil is tempting you and bringing pressure on you, and, and you, know, you need to get away somewhere, and get over it. and say, Lord, I, got, I need to get some, spend some time in the Word of God. I need to spend some time saying what your Word says. I need the time, I need to, to address, to, to, to bring your thoughts 
out of my in my into my mind, out of my mouth, and and let it run into my heart and get these thoughts right now out of my mind. Amen. And and eventually that pressure that from that temptation will lift and leave. I knew a guy who was who was uh, he's a he was a pastor, but before he was a pastor, he he ran the streets. This dude was a crack addict. He was hooked on crack cocaine, and he was he was big time addicted to it. And he said that's how he became free. That's how he became free. He said, I spent so much time, when he decided he was going to be free from this addiction, I spent so much time in the Word of God. I spent so much time putting God's thoughts in me, thinking God's thoughts, meditating about the Word of God, and, and listening to the Word of God, speaking it out of my mouth, until it just began to push that out of my life. It pushed it out of my life, and that temptation, that, that, that craving for crack cocaine, it just left. What happened? It was displaced. It was displaced. The law of displacement. And why you can do that with if you're addicted to crack cocaine or any other addiction, or if you're addicted to worry or fear or or anything that's not of God, that's by Satan trying to build a stronghold into your life. You can get into the Word of God so strong that it'll just push it out. It'll push it out, and you will experience freedom. Amen. So we're talking about about these uh, about these points, and those are the first three. And we'll get back into some more next week. But we're talking about how to overcome strongholds, strongholds are satanically inspired ways of thinking. Satan wants to imprison you in those thoughts. You'd be surprised at how many Christians that love God with all their hearts are in prison right now. They're in prison. With, with, with satanically inspired thoughts and thinking that they can't overcome, that, that and, and they, and it's, it keeps habits in their lives and keeps them in a bad place. Oh, but God said there's freedom to you. There's freedom for you. It's available to you through the Word of God. Uh, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen? And, and it begins with the Word of God. Amen? But we're showing you how to overcome those, and we'll talk again next week, and we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll finish this. We'll finish this um, these points up, and it's going to help you a whole lot. Amen? Amen. But before we leave, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, if you've never made the decision to receive Jesus, it's so simple. All you have to do is pray a prayer like this. Dear God in heaven, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose again from the dead. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Savior. It's that simple. If you pray a prayer like that, then we believe that you got born again. You need to get into a Bible-believing church and, uh, and, and, and grow and learn. And we're growing and learning. We're calling this broadcast, it's called Building on the Rock. And I am Pastor Chris Turner, the pastor of Rock Tabernacle Church, and we'll get back into the Word next week. God bless you.